Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew this lovely outfit with a princess dart boost here and a roll color detail. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Pins, tape measure, tracing wheel, ideally a pencil should be used to draft a pattern but for tutorial purpose, I'll be making use of this green marker pen, cello tape, calculator, paper scissors, rulers and curves, my front and back basic bodies pattern. So I have here my half scale basic bodies pattern, which I drafted using the boss dart technique. The link to the tutorial will be above and in the description box below. The first thing I will do is to alter this basic bodice block into a princess that bustier pattern. So the first thing I will do is the underboss tightening. My shoulder to underboss measurement is 13 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 13 inches from the neck point downwards. Like this. I will square out a line horizontally like this and this line is the underbust line. My around underbust measurement is 34 inches. So I will go ahead to divide my around underbust measurement by 4 and this is 34 inches divided by 4 and this is equal to 8.5 inches. So on the underboss line, starting from the center front, I'll go ahead to measure and mark 8.5 inches like this. I will now include this dart in the measurement. So I'll measure my 8.5 inches like this, making sure that this dart is not included in the 8.5 inches measurement. I'll measure what I have left. And this gave me one inch and I'll divide this one inch into two and this is 0 0.5. So I'll go ahead to measure and mark 0 0.5 on both sides of the dart legs like this. I'll connect these two points to the boss points like this using my ruler. I will also connect these two points to the base of the waist dart like this. I'll use my ruler also for this. So now I'm done with the underboss tightening. From the shoulder tip on the armor curve, I'll measure a mark four inches downwards like this. And this is the point where the princess that we start from on the arm hole. I'll connect it to the boss point like this using my ruler. From this point, I will come down by 1 inch and I will mark the 1 inch point. I will now connect the 1 inch point to the bust point like this using my ruler also. I will extend this point beyond the ammo curve by 1 inch which is the exact same value that I came down by. Using my French curve, I will go ahead to redraw the lower part of the ammo curve like this. I will correct this sharp point here with my curve, with my French curve like this. So now I'm done with the front pattern. I will now move over to the back pattern. 
On the back pattern, from the shoulder tip, I will measure a mark 4 inches downwards on the armhole. Like this, just, I, just like I did for the front pattern. I will now go ahead to connect this point to the base of the back with that on both sides of the dart like this. Now that I'm done with the princess dart, I will now go ahead to alter the front neckline. Note that the neckline dimension on this basic pattern is 3 inches by 3 inches. I want the shoulders to be just 2 inches wide, so I will measure and mark 2 inches like this. From the base of the front neckline curve, I will measure and mark one inch downwards like this. I will now connect these two points together with my curve. So the shoulder width is 2 inches, while the total neck depth the I'm working with is 4 inches. I will also go ahead to alter the back neckline curve. Also, the basic neckline for the back is 3 inches by 1 inch. I will also make the shoulder width just 2 inches wide, just like I did for the front. As for the back neck depth, I will connect the two inch point for the shoulder width to the armhole or chest line at the center back like this so the total back neck depth is about nine inches you can reduce this value if you are uncomfortable with exposing your back so as to drop the roll collar I need to measure the back and the front neckline curves. So I'll go ahead to measure the back neckline. And the value I got for the back neckline measurement is 10.25 inches. I will also measure the front neckline curve. And the value I got for the front neckline curve is 7 inches. I will now go ahead to add the front neckline curve and the back neckline curve together. So after adding these two values together, it is equal to 17.25 inches and this is the value used for the row color. Now I will go ahead to cut out the back and the front patterns like this. I will close the boss dart like this using the cello tape. I will correct the un unevenness on this side. I will correct the unevenness on this side with my curve like this. I will now go ahead and finish cutting out the front pattern. So 
So these are the front and back patterns. So because this outfit is a sleeveless outfit, I will need to reduce the shoulder, the shoulder tip by about half an inch. So I will temporarily join the two front pieces together at the armhole. I will measure half an inch. I will slightly redraw the armhole curve. I will also do the same thing for the back person. I will measure half an inch and I will redraw the armhole curve like this. I will now trim it off. It is now time to drop the roll collar pattern. The first thing I will do is to draw a 2 inches margin which will be my starting line on the pattern paper like this. I will square out a line vertically like this. From the margin, I will measure out the length of the collar which is 17.25 inches which is the front and the back neckline values that I made that I measured earlier. I will make the width of the collar 3 inches. You can make yours small wider than this. I later, I later I just set mine to 4 inches. I will now go ahead to connect the points together like this to form a rectangular shape. This side will be the center front and it will be cut on fold on the fabric. At this end, I will extend it by 3 inches and I will connect it to the upper part like this with a slanted line. The collar should be cut on bias on, on your fabric of choice. I will now go ahead to cut out the collar pattern. So these are the pattern pieces for the bodies of the dress and what I intend to do now is to go ahead and cut out these pattern pieces on my fabric. I will be cutting these pattern pieces out on both the main exterior fabric which is Ankara African print fabric and my lining fabric also. So now I have gone ahead to do the cutting on my fabric. I used half an inch seam allowance all through, except for the side seam where I used 1.5 inches side seam allowance. I did not add any seam allowance to the center back because I already have a 1 inch zip allowance at the center back. This is the front piece. This is the center front piece. I cut one piece on fold on the main exterior fabric, which is Ankara. And I also cut another piece on the lining fabric. I have already interfaced the wrong side of the lining piece and I've also padded the bust area. This is the side front piece. I cut two pieces on the main exterior fabric and another two pieces on the lining fabric which I've already interfaced and I've also padded the bust area on the wrong side. This is 
the center back piece. I cut two pieces on the main exterior fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric and I've already gone ahead to interface the wrong side. This is the side back piece. I cut two pieces on the main exterior fabric. And two pieces on the lining fabric and I've also interfaced the wrong side around the armhole area it is now time to cut out the roll collar on this black contrast fabric I'm using this pen case as a weight to prevent the fabric from slipping off the table I will fold the black fabric on bias like this in a triangular shape like this I will also go ahead and fold it into two like this making a total of four layers because I intend to cut two pieces of the row collar on fold I will now place the roll collar pattern on the fabric like this. I will paint the center front in place like this. I will paint the center front in place like this. Not that the center front should be on fold. This side should be on fold, so I will paint it in place. Note that the upper part of the collar can also be cut on fold, but I won't be cutting mine on fold. I'll be cutting out the two pieces separately. I will now go ahead to add half an inch seam allowance all around the color pattern like this. Then I will cut it out. As I mentioned earlier, you can cut the upper part of the collar on fold if you wish. So this is what the collar looks like. I've also gone ahead to cut out this interfacing also on bias. I will fix the interfacing to one piece of the collar. On the wrong side the other color piece will not be interfaced these are all the main exterior pieces for the bodies of the dress i will now go ahead to pin all the pieces together like this right side to right side after pinning the pieces together I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch seam allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done as you can see and I've also gone ahead to press open all the seam allowances. I have done I have gone ahead to do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. This is the row collar. As you can see, I fixed the interfacing to just one piece of the two row collar pieces. I will now go ahead to stitch the row collar in this direction using half an inch sewing allowance.
So now the stitching has been done and I've also turned the collar to the right side and I've ironed the collar in place and I've also stitched this stitch these ends together. I will now place the two back pieces on top of the front piece like this, right side to right side. I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. This is the roll collar and I've already knocked the middle of the roll collar. I've also knocked the middle of the neckline at the center front of the bodies. The first thing I would do is to mark the one inch zip allowance at the center back. This is because the collar should not reach the zip allowance. I will now place the collar on top of the bodies like this, right sides are together. I will make sure that the center points on both pieces match up. I will pin in place. I will pin in place all around the front and the back necklines like this. After pinning, I'll go ahead to stitch in place using one quarter inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done. I will now go ahead to bring out the lining piece. I will notch the center front of the lining piece neckline like this. I will place the lining piece on top of the main exterior piece like this with the wrong sides together and making sure that the middle points match up. I will also pin the neckline in place all around the neckline of the main exterior piece making sure that the middle points of both pieces align with each other. I will now take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So I'll go ahead to do the stitching now on my sewing machine. So now the stitching has been done. And this is what it looks like on the looks like on the wrong side. After stitching, and I know the same allowances all around the neckline. I now went ahead to understick the seam allowance to the neckline of the lining fabric. And this is what the row collar looks like after fixing it in place. It is now time to close the armholes since this is a sleeveless outfit. So I will flip over the bodies to the, to the wrong side like this. I will pin in place 
making sure that the shoulder seam lines of both the lining piece and the main piece match up Once I'm done pinning, I'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I'll do the same thing for the other side as well. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. After stitching, I notch the same allowances. I now, on, I now went ahead to understick the seam allowances to the armhole of the lining piece as far as I was able to go on my sewing machine. I will now go ahead to join the side seams together. I will be joining lining to lining and fabric to fabric using 1.5 inches side seam allowance which was the size seam allowance that I used when I was cutting out the fabric. So that's it guys, we are done. And this is the final look of the bodies. Stay tuned for my next tutorial, where I will fix a layer skirt to the bodies of this dress. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.